Um, all right, welcome to the July 16th Akapai Maintainers meeting. Um, PRs and issues in 1.0 to go over. Um, Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation's uh, call, so the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Code of Conduct is in effect. Um, as far as PRs go, we're looking good. I think, as they say, there's only one um, that I'm looking to uh, really concerned about getting in, and, and I have not done enough on it. I will look at this today and find any um, any issues. The only thing I'm a little confused about is where we put the LTS or how we indicate that other than as a, a comment in here. Um, as far as I know, we're still going to have 0, 011, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and each of those represents the latest LTS. Um, is, is you know, whichever one is the the latest is the the latest LTS. I think that's what we're doing. Um, Emiliano, did you have any other? Suggestions beyond that? I think that's what you're saying, but I'm not sure. Uh, no, not really. My main comment was about basically like the once you make a fix to an LTS branch and which yeah. is a new miner based on that, whether we should just like automatically flag that as the latest LTS instead of the of the main one and having branches instead of having branches for each one of the minor releases, just maintaining one longer lived, you know, say it's the yeah. 0 012 LTS, 0 012 dash LTS instead of having the minor, because otherwise we get flagged also for past, unless we delete the older branches, we get flagged uh, potential issues also in the past okay. uh, branches. So for sure, the intention is there's one branch. Okay. So that for sure. The only thing I'm worried about is what do we call each release? And it's, I kind of like the idea of branch, you know, 0, 012 LTS. Um, and maybe that's the way to go. Um, but anyway, the, um, the, but each release, I don't think has an indicator that it's LTS. It's just that the 0, 012 yeah, the, Z the zero twelve base is designated as LTS. Yes. The, the the highest the highest patch version of zero twelve is the is the current LTS. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense to me. Okay. Good. All right. Um, I'll try to. As I say, I haven't had a chance. I'm, I'm going to try hard today to go through that one. Um. Other than that, you know, if we get an update to the docs or um, anyone familiar with this um, one that Patrick's working on. Um, I'm not worried about that one. And then if we get the docs in, that's great. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about in the pull request is in the closed, and in particular, it's this one. Um, this was seen as a, um, was submitted as a vulnerability. Um, do we... Um, do we agree this is a vulnerability? So George put this in and said a lot and then backed that off to some. Um, uh, handlers did not check first to see if there was a connection and responded. Um, do we see that as a vulnerability? And if so, do we patch this in the 11 and 12 LTS? Which is the main question. 
Um, I wasn't super sure what you could do with it, but it did kind of seem like a vulnerability for sure. Like what he described, you can definitely do pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, would this, uh, do you see this fix since you did it, Jamie, do you see this as hard to apply in the 12 and the 11 branches? I don't think so. Unless like it's basically just injecting a bit of code into these yeah. handlers. Yeah. It was pretty simple. I did have like a question about the error handlers, uh, problem report handlers, if because I didn't do anything there because uh, mm -hmm. it can be connectionless, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was going to ask, how, how does this affect connectionless? Sorry? I was going to ask, does this affect connectionless uh, exchanges that inherently don't have a connection record and then... No, well, you can't. I don't think you can use it to, it's not a vulnerability with connection list because you, it's taking advantage of a connection like a, that hasn't occurred yet. Um, but like I, the way you described it, like you could have a connection that hasn't occurred yet. And then you could probably send like problem reports into the web hooks. And then when the connection happens, then you'd get problem reports coming through. That's kind of what I understood of it. So, but I don't know how to, uh, what we do, because if they're support connection list, then you can't wait for a connection. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of, yeah, that's, I had questions about it, but um, yeah. I think the more dangerous ones were the, actual um basic message because then you could have a message that pops something up to do something else um where a problem reports like just a problem report but anyway it's still those were what questions i had about it it's a bit yeah okay um yeah we should look at um see if we can get george to respond to what he thinks as well yeah and the um, thing he said there was just a couple that he was worried about but mm -hmm. um, but yeah i'm not sure okay he did give it oh he did give a thumbs up on this one yeah, it's just the question about the problem report, and I don't really understand how that could be used nefariously. So if anyone has any thoughts on that. Okay. All right. Um, I'll see if I can define what we need to do next with this one. Um, that's those, um, Daniel, I saw your comment in the, um, about the arm, uh, Akif is not here. I don't know. Emiliano, have you had any status from him on where he is with the arm? I know. I don't think he's made much progress. No, he's, he's pretty much stuck. I think the next thing they would, would or at least stuck in the path that he was, following which was trying to finally get those wrappers published and and working i think the next step was going to be trying to take the the, the affected dependencies out so make uh, we discussed about making a plugin for that bts right. yeah. thing yeah yeah uh, i haven't talked to him about that in the last day or so so we'll have to check in okay okay it would um, be nice to have it before the 1.0, though, just from a... Yeah. Yeah, not being able to do ARM is awkward. Yeah. Um, 
This one. Um, so I responded to this one. He, this guy provided um, this person. I don't know who it is. Um, provided two scenarios of revocation issues. This one I don't think is uh, valid, but this second one does look valid. Um, I I don't know how crucial it is. Um, but it looks well. It it is in a, a relatively rare use case, but but certainly conceivable. But the fact that um. Akapai is reporting both registries are updated, even though only one of them was updated, um, is what it looks like it's doing. Only publications for RevReg A are written to the ledger. So if you say if we're saying publish all and not specifying a then it definitely is, and and the intent and it screws up b the question is is it actually screwing up b and a the two things i'm wondering is is the semantics that you're saying publish all for a or you're saying publish all without limit um that would seem to be a problem if it is and then and would we want that before 1.0 i did some work on this endpoint a little while ago but yeah um yeah just the endpoint in general is pretty weird but i don't know i okay. can try to have a look at some point it's okay I find it weird because you like if you have an empty list and that revokes everything. If you have, I uh, yeah, it's just like weird. I don't know how many people use this endpoint, but it is pretty weird. Just to figure out how it works. But <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but I didn't want to do a bunch of uh, backwards compatibility stuff. Like I don't know. There's a ticket a while ago where I fixed something with it, but. Apparently, I didn't fix everything. <laughs> okay. I'll try to have a look at that. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's other issues in here that we need to address right away. Is there any that are others have seen that think we should be looking at right away? Um, I haven't created a ticket for it yet, but there's recent recently there's failing tests on the ATH. Oh, right. I was gonna bring that one up. Yeah. Um Ian, it looks like the merging the um uh the W3C uh, changes broke some some of the AATH tests. Yep, I started looking at that this morning. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I think that's it. Um, there's, there's the there's the the thing that Jamie's looking into about the yes. the oh, profile right. managers. Uh, Jamie could probably explain it better. That I, I can, but there's some issues with naming and, and behavior there. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a false flag with the multi-ledger, multi-tenancy stuff. I think the problem that we're having with traction is just the plugin using that other class. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm still looking into that, but I don't think it what I said. Yesterday, I don't think is actually a problem after I looked at it more. Okay. So is it good? Is it is it worth doing some renaming in, in those classes just to make it more straightforward what they actually are supposed to be doing? Yeah, that's kind and, of what and, I'm doing because it just 
if you read the names of the classes and stuff, it doesn't make any sense or what you're actually doing. So I think that's something. And is that in Occupy or in in uh, the plugin? It's in Occupy and kind of the plugin. They both basically you think if you're using Askar, you use the Askar class, but the Askar class there's two classes and it can use either one and one of them puts them all in one sub wallet and one of them yeah. puts them all in their own wallet. And so it doesn't describe what it actually does properly. Mm. So I think that's where we got confused and just got used it. the ask our class when we shouldn't have been, or the one yeah. called ask our class when we shouldn't have been. Um, Daniel and Shara, for your background, we discovered uh, a multi-tenant traction instance that we expected had separate databases for each tenant actually had all of them in one database and that was a surprise and uh so now we're figuring out why we we're surprised by that and what what wasn't set up correctly to do that and that's where this sort of investigation has gone so from jamie from what you said to summarize the problem is largely in the plugin, but it is was likely created because of bad naming and and uh, in Akapai that led the plugin developer to do different things than they should have. Yeah, basically, it's called Askar Multi Tenant Manager when really it's Single Wallet Multi Tenant Manager. But it doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's a bit confusing, but I don't think there's any bugs or anything really with Akapai. It's just more a renaming thing, but I mm -hmm. still need to look into it a bit more. Okay. That's that one. Um, okay, so that's the ARM stuff we've talked about. Jamie's filing a profile manager. Awesome, Daniel, thank you. Emiliano, I'll leave that to you and Akita to, to yep. think about. Um, okay, so it looks like, oh, and then the last thing was testing on 1.00. Any other than the, so we've got the regression from AATA that AATH uncovered from from merging the the VCDI stuff. Um, any other issues that have been raised with the um, RC four in any testing that's been done? So I haven't quite gotten around to pushing the RC four through the build pipelines that I intend to for testing just yet. Okay. Um, so I'll take care of that today and, and report back if I run into anything. Okay. okay. I don't think any of those problems were in RC4 either. They're added after. Oh, they were added after. You're right. However, we're likely to, before we get to 1.0, we're likely to get, uh, we're likely to include that. So. We mm -hmm. will have to fix the VCDI one, which means we'll probably have to do an RC5 shoot. I think we do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. 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 sounds good. Okay, any other topics? All right, well, let's leave it at that then. Have the most delightful of days. Likewise. Have a good one. Thanks. All right. Take care, all. See you.